So I was watching this video from Code Your Own AI YouTube channel. And in this video, he was pointing to a paper from Stanford, which was saying that when you give large language models a reasoning or logic problem, the ordering of the sentences in this problem actually has a great effect on the outcome and accuracy. You can actually pause the video and read this, but here in this case, this sentence, if the normal teacher comes in, there's a 40% chance it's been just moved one sentence before in this paragraph. I mean, you do that, the accuracy actually dips significantly, but if you give this version, it actually gets it right. So it's a great video, actually. You can uh, watch it. I'll put a link in the description. But I wanted to test it out and see if we can actually improve the situation. So in this video, it gives multiple examples, and I've extracted the text for two of the examples. And I'm actually going to use the, teach, uh, the student example, because not only it includes logic, but also probability in it. All the code files for this they will be available at my Patreon at the connoisseur level. Link will be in the description, by the way. So I included the good version of the prompt where LLMs perform better and the bad version. So let's grab the good version of the problem. The answer to this, I also included the answers. The answer to this is supposed to be 24%. If we give this and run it using my unified OpenAI. So we actually uh, here in this file named Perfect Logician. You just give the good example and run it. And let's see what the LLM answers as. I am using OpenAI Unified. This will be available at Patreon as well, just to simplify things. Okay, it's doing some reasoning and it answers it with 24%, which is correct. But if you go ahead and pick the bad version, so-called, I mean, it's not a really bad version. It's just one sentence has been moved up. And if we run it, it actually got it right this time. But I tested this multiple times. We're going to look at other scripts that run this in parallel multiple times. But usually speaking, if you don't give any system message, it actually gets it right only about six times out of 20. And with a kind of like what I considered was a clever system message, it still only got it five out of 20 times, right? So we can actually look into that and I'll show you some of my results with GPT 3.5 as well. I ran a lot of experiments. I wanted to see if I can come up with a, a system message that might actually improve the situation. And I did most of my testing with GPT 3.5 because what I uh, thought was that in the video, it was saying that the ordering of the sentences mattered quite a lot. Let me zoom in a little bit. So I actually got these sentences and I split them into each sentence into a list. And then we're going to do a permutation on it. So we're going to actually run possible combinations of the ordering of the sentences. That's what we're going to do just to see what happens. And with this logic, you can actually experiment with different system messages as well. You just enter the problem statement, the system message, and everything's just uh, run for you. If you're enjoying my videos, take a look at my website where you can find 250 plus free coding videos. It's echohive.live. Link will be in the description. And if you're a patron, you can find the code download links for any other projects. Before we look at the script, which runs through all the combination of sentences, let's actually take a look at a straightforward one. We're going to use Threadpool Executor uh, to run this 20 times. You can actually change it and run it as many times as you like. We're going to use GPT for Turbo Preview. We set a system message here. Let's leave it empty for now. And we, if the system message is not empty, then we set a system message for it. And using the chat method of uh, OpenAI Unified, we just run this 20 times and we check for 20% in response. If it's true, then we save it to a JSON file along with the system message and how many correct and incorrect answers we've gotten. Let's run this. So we're going to use GPT-4 Turbo Preview, which points to the latest models. We have initialized 20 instances. We are using 20 mix workers with the Threadpool Executor. And so let's see, our answers should be coming in. I said streaming the false, so we're only going to see if it's answering correctly or not. So this is actually the good version of the uh, problem, meaning the one that LLMs do actually good. And if you look, there is no system message. We got 18 correct and two incorrect. If you go ahead and actually pick the uh, more difficult, I should have named this not good, bad, but easy or difficult, perhaps. Don't mind that, please. Uh, I'm just going to replace it with the more difficult version of the problem. And I run it again. Okay. And also I'm using OpenAI Unified. That just makes uh, this stuff much easier. If you're interested in learning more about it, just do go to uh, watch my OpenAI Unified API video. But like I said, the code files for this will be available at Patreon. So we are getting some answers, but as you can see, we are getting incorrect more frequently. Yeah, we are getting a lot of incorrect. Okay, we only actually was able to get five correct with no system message. So maybe we can maybe try to set a system message like you are a perfect logician, right? Let's see if that's going to make a difference. 
and let's run it with this system message. And while this is running, I'll show you some of the experiments I did with GPT 3.5 using quite a lot of different system messages here. My first attempt was you possess unparalleled logical reasoning ability, surpassing even the legendary intellects of Einstein and Newton. Usually speaking, this didn't really help much. I was getting about 10 to 20 correct out of all combinations. This is the script we're going to look here in a moment. This actually reorders the sentences of this problem in every possible combination. And but so I, I actually tried to give it some actual just words like superhuman performance or things like giving it, you know, you're like Sherlock Holmes, even correct reasoning and correct logic. I tried to give it the names of all of the great minds that I could think of. I actually got GPT-4 to write these. So I tried scientists and I tried mathematicians. I also tried uh, inputting encouraging system messages. But some combinations of uh, perfect logician, you think deeply about the problem and giving it some important names of interesting figures from, intelligent figures from history, actually did make it did, it, it did seem like it, it added to the performance improvement. So here we tried, you're a perfect logician. Let's see what the results was. We see that we got actually seven correct instead of the 20. It's difficult to see if this will actually repeat, but system message seems to have a slight effect from what I uh, understand. So now maybe let's go ahead and uh, go to the comb combinatronics approach. So in this script, what we're going to do is we're going to take the problem statement and we're going to split it into sentences as a list, and we're going to use the iter tools to create the sentence combinations. This is going to give us all the different sentence combinations, which is going to amount to about 120 of them. And we're going to run it in parallel for all of them with mix workers set to 20. And we'll, we can run actually GPT-4, but this gets pretty expensive. A single run of this costs 2 $3 with GPT-4, so do keep that in mind. But I did run this towards the end, actually right here, and this one. So when I run it with no system message, it was able to get 81 uh, out of 120 correct. This is uh, all the different combinations of sentences that can be arranged of the problem statement. And when I tried as a perfect logician, this was one of the good system messages that I found that I thought might have worked with GPT 3.5. Then I only got 75 out of the 120 right. So this was this either that system message was, you know, a random result. Or deep through GPT, it worked better with GPT 3.5. This was the result with GPT 4, the latest model, and it uh, actually reduced its importance, uh, sorry, uh, performance rather than giving it a, a no system message at all. Anyway, uh, we can try to run this uh, uh, with 3.5. Let's do that 3.5 Turbo 0125. So, this is again going to use Threadpool Executor with. Uh, 20 mix workers and yeah sorry i was in the wrong script but here we have for all the combinations and sentence combinations and we're gonna keep track of it again we are using the as a perfect logician let's test this let's see if it'll if it'll get over 20 correct uh let's run this so once we are done uh, we are getting quite a lot of incorrect ones we're gonna save the json file to result for that json uh, I also had some some of the earlier system messages here saved at the system messages that text. You can actually experiment with them. Maybe this will be a I actually tried one of the when I said you're a perfect logician, copilot completed as Sherlock Holmes and Hercules Payrot Poirot. I'm not sure how to say that, but that didn't work so well. Einstein and Newton worked a little bit better, maybe, but you can feel free to experiment with it. I'll provide this system messages at the uh, download as well. Yeah, the issue with the uh, Threadpool Executor is that sometimes when it's done, it fails to save it. Uh, that's why I didn't want to use GPT-4 because it just, you know, it just, I think sometimes the threads don't get closed properly, but we'll just run it again. And most times it works, but keep that in mind. If it gets hung up in the terminal, you can choose to wait for it or just kill the terminal and I restart. Control-C might not work when you're using multi-threaded application. But all in all, this is an interesting prospect, and this script is interesting in its own right. Uh, maybe you can give it different problem statements. Like I said, I've included another uh, problem statement, but you can maybe find your own. Try to get it to perform better, perhaps. And if you do find a super secret, high-performing system message, do let me know in the comments or Discord. I'll put a link to the Discord in the comment uh, in the description. So as you can see, we got only 19 correct. So this is pretty much like average. I'm not sure if the system message did all that much of a difference. But this was a fun experiment. I hope you enjoyed it.
I also just introduced exclusive API access to the Autocoder Unified API I've created. This uh, chat API allows you to build apps uh, and prototype ideas using the OpenAI Unified class that I've created. You have to be an architect level patron to get access to it. I'll put a link in the description and for the remainder of the video, I'll put a demo, four minute demo of how it works. If you enjoy it, if you want to use it, uh, feel free to become a patron. You'll also gain access to over 200 uh, code download for my uh, project files. Thank you for your support. Autocoder Unified allows you to build complex apps. Let's start with a simple example. We can ask it to return a simple chat app and it has returned this chat app, which communicates with GPT API. You can ask it to save the message history JSON file. It will now iterate over this code. Here we go. Now we are actually saving the messages to a JSON history file. We can ask it to set mix history to 2000 words. And as you can see, the return file has mix history words set to 2000. Autocoder API understands the uni OpenAI Unified class and all of its methods. We can start over by deleting the code response file. We can ask it to generate an app that takes in user description and gets GPT to generate a more elaborate description based on that and then generates an image. And here we go. See, we are now taking a user description, uh, elaborating on the description, and then generating the images. I have asked it to save the description and image paths to DB, and it's creating a SQLite database and saving the descriptions along with the image paths to a SQLite database. So you can use the Autocoder Unified to start from scratch with simple descriptions. And as long as uh, you keep the code response.py, which is generated by the response that is returned from the API, you will iterate over this code. Feel free to modify this code, uh, check for errors, and this will actually take into consideration in the next iteration, or you can also give it complex descriptions. Now, this is not a, a perfect process, so of course, keep in mind that uh, this actually simplifies the process greatly and doesn't uh, makes mistakes rarely, but do keep an eye on the code and make corrections as necessary. When you're building with Autocoder Unified, keep in mind that it will build apps based around the GPT calls at OpenAI Unified.py. So familiarity with this and its methods will help you greatly. But we can ask something like a uh, chat app, which returns JSON responses, for example. And here uh, we see that Autocoder not only set the JSON mode to true, but also added a system message with a system, uh, with a uh, following structure, it sounds good to us. So uh, always review the code and run it perhaps and see if there are any mistakes. It's uh, probably not the best idea to feed in back its error messages, but rather to instruct it or start over again. For example, we can ask it, offer, for example, offer users a choice between two GPTs. Here, for example, it had created two with different system messages for a family assistant and a professional assistant, and it's allowing you to choose one. But as, as you can see, it has forgotten to actually set the JSON mode. We can try to say set JSON responses for both. So as long as this code response.py file uh, is uh, in your working directory, it will always try to improve on it. As you can see, it has set the JSON mode to true, but it had failed to uh, update the system message to return a JSON response, which is necessary. Let's, uh, let's ask it to update the system message to return JSON object. And uh, it has now uh, corrected it. Here we go. Now, as you, as you see, you can actually imagine something such as like tone. You can go ahead and delete the stuff that you think you don't need. All the changes you made at this file will be sent back to GPT for future iterations. So keep that in mind. So, so it is best to work it with it like a copilot get some responses, review them, see if they are actually towards what you're trying to achieve. For example, we can start from scratch. Let's ask it to create an app that reads a file and sends it to GPT for JSON structured summary. And here we get our response. And uh, we set the JSON mode to true and system messages. Please summarize the following text into a JSON structured format. And it's going to read a file and do that. But as you can see, that it didn't specify a JSON structure. Now here you can actually go ahead and define the structure such as structure as follows, right? You can do that, or you can instruct it. Let's try this. We can ask it to add a JSON schema to system messages, title, summary, and keyword keys for each topic that is found. And now, it, as, as you can see, modify the schema details to return a title, summary, and keywords. And it says schema should be followed for each topic that is identified. And it is adding that as a system message. So as you can see, if you, if you instruct it clearly, you get uh, what you need. Like I said, the important part is that it's going to use OpenAI Unified to build your app. So I've been making some videos on how to build with OpenAI Unified. 
So it's going to use a similar style. I hope you find this helpful. Uh, I'll make some more uh, videos on this explaining uh, how I use it so you can better use it as well.